Okay. Uh, you can see my screen and audio. You can hear right. You can start to speak. Okay. Okay. So we gonna talk about the introduction on tokenization in word embedding. Uh, let's start from tokenization. So uh, when it comes to NLP, the first step that you do in the pipeline is tokenization. It's a process of uh, it's the processing of text data for machine learning and NLP task related tasks. So uh, basically what invo it involves in tokenization is breaking down those text files data that we have into smaller units, which we call tokens. So they can be easier for the machine learning uh, models to understand our text data. That is the purpose of tokenization. So again, the goal of tokenization is to find small representation to our data, to our text data. So, for example, if you have a, a sentence like this one, for instance, one country name, then your ears. When you tokenize it, it depends on what tokenization you're using. In this case. Clearly, it's a word tokenization. So the tokenization is breaking down this sentence in word. So the words are uh, becoming their own tokens. So uh, tokenization is not only for words. There are a lot of tokenization algorithms out there uh, that you can experiment on. So what is the usage? Like we said, the crucial step in NLP, natural language processing, because normally when we have text data that are spread from different resources, data are usually messy and highly unstructured. Uh, so without tokenization, passing all these messy data uh, will uh, not make the modeling, but uh, it, it does make the job for the modeling easier to understand those text it will be difficult, there will be a lot of noises involved, so the model will not be, the model's accuracy will be really low. So tokenization to some extent help with that, with minimizing those noises in our data that we have on the, on the data, yeah. So uh, like I said, uh, in models, uh, passing the entire text uh, is not, recommended. Uh, it can be very expensive and it can be also difficult uh, for the model to understand the raw data as it is. So uh, it's better to involve tokenization on our data when we are deciding to do to pass it to a model, to fine tune it, to train it. So uh, tokenization is really an important step in the modeling part. So tokenization help to helps to normalize, standardize the text data by break down into smaller, more manageable units where the modeling algorithm behind the scene can able to understand those texts much better. So that is uh, most of the, the main usage of tokenization. So that, like I said, there are a lot of types of tokenization. So you can do what tokenization on your data, you can do sentence tokenization, and the name suggests words tokenization will divide your raw data into words. The sentence tokenization will divide your raw data into sentence. Uh, the character level, it will segment or uh, divide your words into character level like A, B, C, D. It will just take each particular uh, words, characters from your text, whatever language it is, and it will just Mix them each their own token. So word level tokenization, it is between a word and a character. It's not fully word, it's not fully character. It's just between in between words. Like if there's hello world, the two H can be a character. The, the two L's can be with a word level word uh, with a tokenization. The two L's it doesn't have any meaning, but in the word tokenization, it will create. Uh, those kind of unmeaningful tokenization from a word. So it will break the word uh, between two or three characters, which have sense or doesn't have sense, can be broken down with subword label tokenization. So subword label tokenization 
can be useful or language that are more quantum morphological level uh, morphological in them like Amharic Arabic and there's also morphological level tokenization which break down uh, words into smaller labels to understand the morphological change uh, uh, the morphological symbols on your character because those characters will not uh, might not be exist in the vocabulary of words for example if we see here child the child children in hamaric literally judge so it's a one word but by different by um, interchanging this one particular character it can have a different meaning so this kind of words in our language it could be in english or uh, in any language there are this kind of words right one particular word can be changed into different forms by adding uh, some kind of characters in them so child in the child in children we we see there is the similar child children word but it is used for different meanings so this kind of word representations uh, we call them morphological so these kind of uh, meanings in words are named morphological and these types of language uh, can be break down so we can know we uh, so that the model can understand the difference of this morphological in our words by using morphological labeled tokenization and there could be others but i thought these two could be important for the three language that you guys probably will use so but anyway this kind of words it depends on our uh, use case of course but we can tokenize our particular takers in different types of tokenization uh, tokenization each type of tokenization model out there have their own algorithm their own algebra mathematics behind them how they operate you can read up on them they have a very deep it, it near a deep understanding on mathematics to know how the mathematics work that all of them are implementing this tokenization dividing parts uh, in mathematics calculation so they have a deep algorithm uh, that's how this tokenization are breaking down our text data so what are the challenges of tokenization you got you let's say you guys tokenize but tokenization uh, everything has a challenge if it has a pros and cons and tokenization have one so one is would be ambiguity so you tokenized embed and fine tune your model but again when you, at the end of the day uh, when you test your model it might not answer how you expected it this is a likely occurrence to happen your model will not predict the right way it could be because overfitting of a data or underfitting or it could be because of our organization mechanism that we use it could be because of the embedding uh, algorithm we have used this affect our modeling and what could be the pass what could possibly get wrong when we use tokenization would be ambiguity so tokenization can be ambiguous especially in language where words have multiple meanings so we can use for example in english the word shake one have two uh, more than one meaning right one for verifying something for shaking something and one uh, meaning for check can be used in a financial statement in financial world as a check so this kind of meanings can create ambiguity on our model uh, out of vocabulary words so those tokenization models that you are using to tokenize your data have already a built-in vocabulary and when you use this language they haven't used before they can uh, those some of those vocabulary that are found on your uh, language cannot uh, will not be found on those existing vocabulary so that can cause out of vocabulary word challenge on your tokenization uh, it could cause noise large text documents can co contain a lot of noise type voice abbreviations special character symbols this all cause a lot of noise when you do token tokenization because uh, this will be information that the tokenization algorithm by using the other law so it will create create a noise language specific challenge uh, different language can have unique challenge when you come to tokenization uh, language with complex system like such as chinese in japanese requires which means uh, chinese 
Japan, I don't know about Japan, but Chinese, uh, they, they don't have space in between. Um, English letter, you can see between where there is a space, Amharic has a space, Chinese letters don't have a space. So when you uh, are using the type of language you use, you have to really consider the tokenization type you are using because it's really affect and cause a lot of uh, noises and un unwanted information in your tokenization, which ultimately affects the modeling performance. So this kind of challenge can happen on the type of tokenization you you uh, you, you 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 use used. So how we how can we overcome these challenges to fix these errors? The first thing is pro processing involves cleaning as much as you can. Try to remove every symbol that can cause that is first understand the type of tokenization uh, you are planning to use what can it can handle what kind of language it accepts what kind of, too much to how uh, to how much extent that tokenization can actually understand your raw data you have to understand your tokenization model after you understand that what you have to do is you have to really process your data you have to clean it as much as you can remove every symbols, every unwanted necessary things that can confuse the tokenization. Uh, this can help to improve, to help with removing noise uh, uh, and spelling sorrow. Uh, also incorrect spelling, they are try to correct them. It's just, just to make sure uh, as much as possible you are passing a pure structured data can help the tokenization to perform well, uh, regularization, when it comes to that, understanding, uh, standardize the use of certain characters. For example, if you have these language symbols, uh, 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 apostrophes, hyphens in text, uh, Amharic data has its own symbols, so highly they might have their own. So you have to find some kind of regularization to make sure those new characters that the language have doesn't affect the tokenization, the modeling part. So this can uh, reduce ambiguity in the tokenization. Land language specific tokenization for language with complex writing systems, especially tokenization methods can be used. For example, like I said before, in Chinese words are not separated by space. So a method called word segmentation is used to identify Word contrast. So you have to know your language to choose the right tokenization for a better form of formats. So if your way of your language doesn't have uh, a tokenization method out there that can help uh, with having a good performance on your model, the choice that you have at the end of the day is creating your own tokenization mechanism. Like uh, on the morning, you have heard the Gary team may created their own tokenization because Amharic doesn't have one before. So ultimately, the, uh, if all the tokenization methods is causing an error uh, for other languages that have never been uh, get the chance to get a developed tokenization mechanism, the option you will have at the end would be creating or coming, coming up with your own tokenization algorithm that you can use for a particular language. So that would be the last option you have, but I'm sure a lot of there's a lot of tokenization strategies out there. So one of them will work for this project. I'm just telling you the general option you have for low, low source resource language. So this is about tokenization. If you have question before we work, we move on to our debating, you can ask. Hopefully you understand the purpose of tokenization in NLP. Okay, so let's just move on to our debating. Word embedding in simple term are vector value representation of a particular word. And one thing I forgot in tokenization, they give uh, those tokens will have their own ID value just to differentiate them. Anyway, we will see a demo, we'll discuss it later. Let's just go to 
a word embedding. In word embedding, the simple term in word embedding is vector representation of a particular word. So if there are, if we tokenize our data with words, or whatever the choice we have done to segment our data with word embedding, we can give them a vector uh, representation. And that vector in present, uh, representation of the particular word is what we call embedding. So word embedding are a type of word representations that are lost with similar meaning to have similar present representation so for example if we have i don't know there's another example that i'm going to use later but if we see boy and men or girls or women in as a human we know they have some kind of similarity on those words right we know which gender they are specifically referring to like that the when you embed those words for in embedding algorithms they likely will have a vector representation that is near with each other. They will not have this sim similar uh, vector value, but they have some kind, somehow, we, because they have a semantic similarity, the algorithm will give them somehow a similar vector representation between them. So it will be easier for the model at the end to grab if we ask it for similarity language for uh, a man. Uh, ML race, it will drive the boy in the man vocabularies and respond that as an answer. So vector representations are given based, based on the syntactic and semantic relationship that exists between the words. That's how it's given. It depends on the embedding model. Of course, you use some embedding model, models only focus on semantic relationship between words, some focus on the syntactic relationship, and some focus on both. And there are different ways the embedding models also work like tokenization does. You have to understand, but the main point is how vector representation is given for a particular token is based on this particular uh, main aspects, the semantic and the syntactic uh, representation of that word between in relative to other words and relative to itself also. So that's how word embedding work, giving vector representation for tokens in our text data. So each word is mapped to one vector and the vector values are learned in a way that resembles a neural network because we are doing all this process in cleaning tokenization for this neural to the model, right? The machine learning model. And we are converting to vector because that's how the machine learning behind the scene understand our data. It's, everything is behind the scenes working in numbers. So that's why we are converting this meeting in a mathematical representation vector form. So hence the techniques of the lamp to the field of deep learning. Uh, so the example that I give you. So if I ask one of you, uh, consider mean boy and mean base boy and apple. And if I ask which that from that which is more similar, we all gonna answer boy and mean are more similar than boy and apple. That's how we want to understand our machines also. Our machines, we want them to understand this kind of uh, characteristics in the language so they can be able to enhance our human response layer lookalikes, right? That we want them to answer like us, that, that's uh, end goal. So how we can uh, identify this kind of similarities in our world, how which step in the NLP help us to get there is the embedding part, help us to get there, to help the ML model to understand the kind of similarities between words, the embedding part do that. Like I said, the embedding capture the semantic and the syntactic similarities between words, which allows the NLP models to understand context and meaning of words within, within a given text. Uh, sorting text, the other use of embedding sorting text, they make it easier for computers to organize and classify different types of text, uh, spotting names and places. Uh, embeddings can help with computers find names of people, organization, location in text, uh, translating language, assist in translating words from one language to another more accurately, uh, answer questions, they help system find relevant answers 
by understanding the meaning of word in a question in document. So these are one of the few uses that you can find by using embedding in your text uh, before training them through a model. So summarization between the connection tokenization and through the embedding process. Uh, tokenization, like we said, it is the first step to test, uh, to take the raw data and break it down into individual tokens. This is done through tokenization process, like we said. So it will segment your takers into discrete units, depending on how you choose to do it. It could be in words, characters, sentence, subword. Uh, it could be how you chose it. And this tokenization will create a vocabulary for us. So once we do tokenization, it means we get a, a group of dictionary of tokens. So the next when you done tokenization, the next step what you have would be a bit a vocabulary vocabulary creation for your raw data. Then the embed will happen next. You can embed those tokens and give them vector representation. So the vector representation is how the model actually understand the data much better. And yeah, the last would be you will train those embeddings in your models and see what kind of results that you you have get. So you will you will test your uh, modeling performance at the end. So if it doesn't, if it fails, you will come up again to the first step, try to change different organization embedding mechanisms and help the model to understand better your data. Of course, having more data is better, but having more data doesn't mean a perfect, it will create a perfect performance. It has to be a very clean data because you uh, include a lot of data. It doesn't mean you will decrease the noise the chances you'll create a lot of noise would be big. That will create overfitting, uh, but the more you cleaned and have a structured data and more data for the ML to learn on, you will have at the end a better result. So anyway, these are the steps you will take uh, when, you when you are trying to connect with your models with new information, with your new data you that you want to run them on. Uh, so when it comes to embedding, uh, there are a lot of embedding algorithms like word to vector, uh, birth, and for specifically for Amharic, like mentioned, there's the Gari. No, I don't think they have embedding actually. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of famous uh, embedding algorithms out there. Uh, I would recommend you to start from word to vec in birth. Uh, birth use uh, is built above on the transformer architecture. So if you see transformers, they when they embed their data or when they understand the data, they start from position of a word. How is a word position? They consider trust as a function. So the transform and they can do parallel computing also. So it's just uh, there's a deep discussion that can be made, but uh, I would recommend you just when you want to see the difference in embedding, so you can start from word to vector, uh, birth embedding mechanism. And there could be a lot of, I mean, there are a lot out there which have a different way of uh, embedding your tokens. So read up on them. So I have put the references also here on transformer, especially for transformer architecture. Please watch this video. It's really break it down and helps you to understand how it understand how it process data. Okay, if it's not a question, we can go to the demo. Okay. So uh, I'm going to show you how you can use center piece, sentence piece, sorry, Python module. Uh, this uh, it's also shared here. Uh, the GitHub file, you can find it for the, the sentence embedding. Where was it? There, yeah, yeah, this one. Well, this, mo this particular Python module, 
is language independent, which means it is not, uh, it doesn't have information on only English or other language. It's, it's, it just follows an algorithm to understand any language. So it can be very perfect for this low, low labor uh, resource language like Amharic, Sohali, and Yoruba. So I think it's, uh, you can test it uh, for your fine tuning. So we can see what options do you have, what kind of uh, options do you have when you sentence piece. Uh, for example, let's see, this is uh, just a simple sentence piece. We are training Amharic text. I have this Amharic text, which contain a lot of Amharic telegram data. Where is this one? So I'm training the sentence piece module with this one and I'm trying to break it down so I can find a tokens and see the difference. So one thing you can, for example, I pass it, first I train my own Amharic takers with the sentence piece trainer. After that, I can just pass uh, any data from text and see what kind of tokens it can give me, how it breaks it down. So here it breaks them down. How the algorithm is breaking down uh, depends on the parameter you give it. I haven't given it here. I haven't told it to make it a word or a character kind of uh, tokenization. Just this is just the simple as this is how it came out. So it break down this particular word of Amharic language like this. It gives them an ID. Uh, I don't think there are similar tokens here. No, there are no similar tokens, but let, let's just create a similar token. Let me repeat this word again and see if it makes so how tokenization work is if they are similar part of the words it will give them the same id like Nathaniel also mentioned it on the qa section so if they are similar words they will have a similar id they will not be diff different which is will be easier for when you train a module so if i run this one Sorry for the noise, my fan is shouting. See, my PC got stuck. See, so the, the two words, characters, if you can see them, these Amari characters get the same ID, 7-7, seven, seven, and this particular word is a similar word that I just repeated, they have the same ID. This is how tokenization works. You break down the values, and if they have similar uh, representation, it will give them the same, uh, the same ID. So when it does that, it doesn't work. Uh, care about semantic or syntactic relationship. For example, uh, we, like I told you, check and uh, have two different meanings, right? So it can be inter used interchangeably for different purposes. Uh, tokenization doesn't consider all those things that can happen in a word. Uh, it just gives see the tokenized seg the segments and see the similarity on how they are written. It will give them the same ID. This is what it did on the first uh, sentence. Please can break down work like this. What are what are, uh, is other options sentence this can give you is this just similar. Okay. 
it's just getting a bit slow my vs code anyway anyway here i am decoding the in the above example i decode encode them so it gives me for the words tokenized value here if i want to get the full word i can reverse it by using the decode functionality of sentries just to see what kind of uh, it's just a functionality. I'm just testing the functionalities and I'm just seeing here if actually returns the letter this one for the ID this one, it does. So maybe I shouldn't have run it get easy. Okay, here uh, is, I'm just showing you here uh it has default ids that are embedded in this model in this okay let me just close my base code and open it again it's not Okay, the, uh, and this one on the GitHub file is just uh, telling you you can uh, in, instant here the synthesis processor from bytecode object using this one uh, using this kind of functionality of the synthesis which you can test it out and these are just default IDs that you find on Synthesis Trainer. So when you pass your data to be trained with Synthesis, by default, these IDs are involved on the module. So it's a way how it understands your uh, text. So by default, for example, padding is uh, your token length could be different, right? And if you want to decide every token to have similar lengths, you can define it with the padding uh, option sentence piece offers uh, by default is disabled but you can undisable it we will see it on the latter so here uh, depends on how by default these are the values of this particular this one shows unknown variables if there are unknown ids uh, unknown symbols that sent piece doesn't know it will give them the unknown id uh, i think this one is for yeah for in, end of a sentence, and this one is for, I forgot this one. Yeah, this one is for end of a sentence, this one is for padding, uh, and both, uh, I'll, I'll try to, maybe I'll answer better, but it's just uh, our representation of IDs for possible occurrences that ha can happen on your text. So based if there are unknown things, it will give them the unknown ID value. So the, by default, these values are set like this, but you can choose also to have your own IDs uh, on your text. So if unknown happen, instead of zero, give them minus one. Uh, for end of sentence, give them this ID. You can decide that also, which you define on this parameter. This is where you identify your parameter. So for example, if I want the padding not to be zero by default, I can, by saying this, and it will, uh, minus one will not be your default uh, value for padding. It could be, it will be true or something like that, or depending on what you specify on it. This not that much important. It's just for you guys to know what they are. Okay, where was this? It? Okay, I have removed it from my code, but on the GitHub you can uh, you can see uh, this character being assigned by us on the character, so you can actually call the boss ID like this and assign it any value. And you obtain value or whatever. And for boss for the unknown, you can assign this 
this is just a default IDs, the syntax module by default uh, assigned for the text that you have given it. Uh, this uh, here, uh, I'm just using TensorFlow, TensorFlow, sorry, module to read the, mo the module. So when you run the first module here, it will create an MMO module file like this one, which is where it's uh, the output of understanding your text will be put here. So you can access the module anywhere and access it to ask a question to do tokenization for you on some language and it will do that here i'm just accessing the m module using the tensorflow library and i'm doing the same thing i'm passing it this value and it answered me the same way because it doesn't matter that i use tensorflow it's still accessing the module file that is generated by the sentence space and these are symbols so there are symbols that are defined in the sentence module that it considers them as a user defined and controlled control symbols, which you also have the option to decide on. So user defined symbols, if you decide some symbols from your takers are user defined, you, which you can specify here, it will consider the sentence piece module will concern as a single token without breaking that symbol. So here, for example, I have defined it myself. There are by default sentence piece symbols that are considered user defined symbols and by default they will have their own token value but here i have specified this this maybe if i want to i don't know what amharic symbols are but let's just stick with english and if i said if you see this kind of star symbol on my text data make sure when i say user defined the same people will understand it and it will make sure this particular style symbol has its own token without breaking up. For example, if you can see here, the same symbol is found between these words and it's taken as its own token without being broken down because on the parameter you have defined it as user defined. When it comes to control symbols, they will be break down like this. So they will not be a single token as they are, but they will be divided and here i'm telling it if you find these symbols consider our control symbols and divide them so like any other word on your sentence they will be separated and have their own uh, token the separation so this just are options that you can do based on your data this is more on these symbols which you can uh, read up on here as, as well just similar concept in different interpretation which uh, you can read on the github okay now let's go to another concept so here nb nbt segmentation or support regularization so uh, you can break down like we said before your sentence your uh, your particular text file i mean uh, text data in different forms so here uh, we are accessing here i'm asking the sentence piece module to show me different ways it can uh, break down my particular uh, sentence so i'm choosing this one and it breaks down I, I gave it 10 10 options that i can break down this particular uh, text so it break it break down the tokens in different parts. It just wants it make them like this, a second like this, a second like this, just different for way of uh, making tokenization on your particular data. And each this is their ID for each one of them. This one for the first one, this one, the second one. So this is also another option that you can do on your using this model. Uh, the other part, yeah. In this here in this segmentation you can access this functionality from uh, sentence piece to do further segmentation on your data uh, this one also sampling code as pieces this is a different type of segmentation 
before we were only accessing the encode as pieces, right? This the sample one will break down a different type of segmentation on our data. Uh, if you, I don't know if you guys read up on byte pair coding model, it's another algorithm also how you can tokenize your data using synthesis model. You can access this particular algorithm also. They have integrated this particular model in synthesis piece and you can call it and to do uh, tokenization again using the byte pairing model. But uh, one thing that when you use the byte pairing model algorithm to token your data, you will you won't have the NBA base segmentation algorithm. You won't have that access if you are using this is how just the module works. So if you want to access any NBA based segmentation, you can use the byte pairing encoding model using the sentence piece uh, Python module. Uh, it will return empty because it doesn't know it if you are using the MBE model. But if you are using Unigram model, you can access the NEB based encoding. So here it outputs the last one. You can see it outputs me different types of uh, segmentation, possible segmentation, tokenization that I can do on the on my work. You can access the NB segmentation using the Unigram model. What else is there on sentence piece? You can also choose to correct, to segment or to tokenize your data as character and as a word. All you have to do is on your parameter here, define it as car. Now I have defined it as car, which means it will divide each letter like this. Each letter has been broken down and have its own tokenization ID. And if I want to use word, instead of character, all I have to do is change this card to word. To word, this one. And it broke down like this and word. And you might notice here, there's underscore. The underscore is just center piece used to fill up uh, spaces, white spaces, if we will fill them with underscore. Just something the center piece, the sentence piece module does. Uh, text normalization. Uh, it's just other two, three uh, things that you can uh, access by using a uh, sentence piece, which you can refer text normalization as name suggests, just normalization. You can choose to, you have to do normalization on your data, right? If you have abbreviations, maybe change them to a full word. Uh, if you have apostrophe that can show, yeah, just like this, uh, abbreviations like that to try to have a, a Normalizing similar way of character, you can implement those uh, normalization on your data. So let's just see what debating time is. So for this mo mo demo, I have used word to big package, which you can install using these two packets. Then you can access it like this. For regionism mo model, you can access the word to big library. So anyway, after you get your data, pass it here. Uh, let's just go to this one. After you've done the tokenization, you have to pass your data to the word to big module. Uh, you can define the parameters like this, vector size, the window, just information that you can put off and pass the data. This is how the vector, the vector representation of your data looks like. This is how machine learning understand uh, these values and be able to train better. So uh, if there are, for example, you can see on the word. So if there are similar kind of numbers that you see on the word, it means they have similarities somehow. I don't know who I can see here that have similar, maybe this one, 2.4 into 0.04. Maybe uh, if we see the word, we can see maybe a lot of the similarity between them because the number is uh, a bit close how it is embedded so this is how vector representation looks like for your word in the word the numbers show the similarity or not and you can read up on cosine similarity just to test uh, how is the model is the embedding is really performing well uh, you can also check the cosine similarity 
uh, I think you can import the cosine similarity and pass the data and it will just output data and sh to show you the cosine similarity between uh, inputs that you gave it. Uh, it's just this is not a requirement just to test it your embedding performance anyway this is what embedding vector representation look like and this is uh, information that we pass to our module to train okay and uh, now let's go to question time if you have one So is it clear? Maybe it's clear that you are not asking. Okay, Jarvis. Okay. Can we do more volatile uh, tokenization using this uh, sentence piece? Yes, using sentence piece, you can do tokenization. Uh, I mean, morphological level tokenization. Yeah, I mean, it, it has some, to some extent, it can do some uh, morphological, but morphological has its own tokenization. Maybe may first uh, check on those tokenization types also of Jabez. Sentence piece does do some morphological tokenizations, uh, but there are also tokenizations that focuses on morphological. So just try all of them. Well, which one gives you the better token uh, output is the best for the language. Hilaria. So, yeah, my question is, is tokenization part of pre-processing? But, uh, yeah, have we started, have we started training? And also for what to vec, uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, the data, that, uh, the vectors are the data we used for training. So I, I didn't see the training part, like, yeah, I haven't made, I haven't uh, done the training part here. I just showed you the embedding in the tokenization. And yes, tokenization is a pre-processing part also. Okay, so um, so they, uh, we have to embed, we have to use vector embedding so that we can use that to train the data. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Just one thing you have to be careful is there's a lot of types of embedding and tokenization and you have to pick which is best for you. So one tokenization method that you are using might not give you the right result. Uh, you, so you have to change and explore different types of uh, models that exist there. Jarvis, oh, Hilary, I'm sorry, were you done? Yeah, and I, I I had a follow up on that. Like, um, so be, being that many types of of uh, vector embedding and tokenization, we we can test with cosine similarity vector embedding, and uh, like how do we determine the best for for, for our cases? Yeah. How do we test? Mm -hmm. What is the question? How do we test the the appropriate tokenization and? Uh, vector embedding, for vector embedding, I think you mentioned cosine similarity. I mean, for uh, data this big, it might be hard to just test every data that you have, but I guess maybe as a, as a starter, you can just uh, pass it fewer data and see it actually representing those data uh, by seeing uh, the similarity words that I just said, how similarly it represents them on the vector when it gives them a number cosine similarity you can check that uh, but as a whole at the end of the day you will test all this embedding and tokenization ways when your embedding is if it is if it is successful then you have to the right one and if it's just not or in the middle you can have some ideas of what's wrong on one of those scenarios okay thank you yeah uh, but all one thing is true that is whatever tokenization even if you have the right tokenization and the right embedding for you for the language that you pick if your data is not cleaned properly all these noises are not removed it can cause the tokenization not to perform well so make sure to have 
I took me in the dirt as much as you can. Good job, Ace. Okay, if uh, my question, if you use the Gary model, they did, I think, their own tokenization. Yes. So do, to do another tokenization, or maybe another pre-processing, or uh, just uh, fine tune? Well, you can use their tokenization to tokenize the Amharic data, right? Yeah. Is that what was the question exactly, sir? Okay, my question is: If you use the Gary uh, model, they already mm -hmm. did tokenization. They have a tokenization uh, uh, on the model. So, uh, we, do we have to use sentence piece? I mean, for uh, tokenization? Or? No, if you use the Gary, you don't have to use sentence piece. But you can see uh, the difference on the performance when using both tokenizations, because sentence piece also it's just both of the are alternatives that you can use interchangeably. But as for you, it will be better if you, you see the difference between those two models, how they affect the model performance. OK, okay. okay uh, a group is created on the channel on week five data set, if you can see it. So everyone can share all the data. They create new data. I'm Harik Swahili there, and it can be shared with everyone. With the, you can share it with each other. So we have created that, so make sure to share there. Okay. So uh, if there's no more questions, we can end the tutorial. Uh, I haven't seen your question, Al Bakr, on your chat. BERT is an embedder, but it, it is built on the transformer architecture. Transformer, it's uh, a neural network architecture, right? It's a type of neural network. Uh, BERT is built up on that. So it has the same, it follows the transformer architecture, but it's an embedder. An embedder. Yes, beginning of same thing. Sorry, you reminded me. I have forgot the boss ID. Okay, thank you, Abwakar. If it's no more question, can I get a reaction to in this tutorial? I can get back to your work. <laughs>